Hi guys, so I'm gonna do, um, today we're gonna do Blood Furnace and the Shattered Halls. Um, I figured I would start off by kind of showing you guys how to get there from the inn. So this is the, this is the inn. When you get to Outland, you're gonna go, this is gonna be your home for... A little while probably not permanently honestly I probably would make it your your hearth um, it I guess it depends if you're questing this is definitely gonna be what you're gonna do but if you're gonna be dungeon grinding on launch um, I wouldn't waste your time it's stupid to do it there um, you're gonna go to Shatrath right after 61 I think I think 61 or 61 you start doing like um, like slave pins um so and but before you go to slave pins you're going to want to go to shatrath and i would strongly recommend doing that a little bit on the early side um again this is using retail so you know take it for what it is um so what we're going to do is i'm going to use a ground mount and i'm going to show you how to get to Blood Furnace. Um, Shattered Halls. Now, just a quick side note. You don't actually need to do Shattered Halls until Tier 5. Uh, SSC Attunement. So, you don't need to do it until Phase 2. Um, but... If it's something that you want to do, <coughs> like I'm going to be doing, um, obviously I'm going to do all the heroics multiple times, then I, um, I'll do a different video on how to get keyed there for that. It's very simple. It's, it's a very, very small quest chain. Requires a little bit of gold and killing Fell Reaver, which at 70 with like, on, on retail, we could actually kite the Fell Reaver. Oh, I mean, you could literally solo him if you did it right. Like, what we did is we would kite him over here. Because there's a bunch of... You see where all these NPCs and stuff are fighting the Infernals? Um, while they're killing these things, if you can get Fell Reaver to get tagged, they'll pull threat and they'll kill him for you. Um, but again, it is whatever you don't have to do that all right so what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave um thralmar and you're just gonna head straight up like you're about like you're trying to go to ramparts right so the, the easiest method i'm gonna actually fly but i'm gonna do it closer to the ground you're gonna come over here go over go up here like you're heading towards honor hold and you're gonna cut a right. Now we're gonna go all the way over here. And then we're gonna go up these little, this little ramp here. Then we're gonna go up and over here. Over this little fucking hut thing over here. We're gonna keep going straight. Bend around. And bam, here's blood, um, here's blood furnace. This is probably going to be what you're going to start with, um, leveling. I mean, at least my group, my particular group is going to start in blood furnace. I'm not going to waste my time with ramparts. Ramparts is not really worth doing a level. It's really, really short and you're going to hit the instance cap pretty quick. The goal here is to, um, take at least 12 minutes to clear each one so you don't run into the five cap. And just do that over and over again. And there's a lot of YouTube content out there explaining exactly how to do that. So it's pretty solid. All right, I'm gonna zone in. Now, obviously, I'm in balance spec, but I'm gonna kind of show you guys um, explain each pull and the boss mechanics. And again, these mechanics aren't tough. 
and these will all these will all be usable on normal and heroic and on retail these guys won't be here these are all the quest givers um that that they put into the Outland dungeons later but these guys won't be here so none of this will be here these these two might this little group here but where these blood elves are doing whatever they won't be here um, all right, so we got Life and Skull Enforcer, just your standard warrior type mob. Nothing real crazy. Uh, think Moral Strike. Okay. Now, all right, so we have three groups. Um, each group has two elites and one non elite imp. The two elites are casters. So you can handle it one of two ways you can have you can cheap one kill the other one but you're gonna want to los pull so you're gonna want to do something like this you're gonna want to pull and then just kind of go over here and hide over here and range them out because if you run up there you're gonna pull the other group and until you get you out gear the content that's gonna be really problematic um my recommendation to here too is just to pull them back so you can have a hunter misdirect, or you can just outrange them. So, you know, just pull them back. And then just keep moving backwards. Then kill them out here. All right, so now we're coming up here. So he, this pull here, um, again, yeah, just pull them, LOS them. If you want, you can LOS over here. You can kind of LOS over here. The imp casting fireball isn't really that deadly. You can even have your range just kill it. Okay, so again, we have two warrior adds. Um, you know, like CC one. Kill the other. Now, on this stairs, there you're going to find that there is a stealth mob. You want to look for that mob. Um... Hunters using flare would be really helpful here. Um, not just that the tank just needs to move at you know at this angle and make sure he gets it eventually. These things will stun. They're not going to be able to stun me though, but that's my point. Like these rogues are, will stun you. Um, tanks, I strongly recommend you bring free action potions here. Um, Really, in all the dungeons that have orcs, shattered halls, all of them, uh, there's always adds like stunning you, and for extra potion prevents that. So if you know a pull is coming up where a mob can stun you, it won't happen there, and that is what you want because if you're stunned, you're not mitigating. There's another rogue here and killed it. Um, just warriors, just kill them. So a total of three stealth mobs. And it works. Very important. These pulls get really, really dangerous. So what you're going to do, if you have a hunter, have them misdirect them to you. If you don't have a hunter, you're going to LOS pull around the corner here. This is why it's important to kill the rogues because you don't want to get stunned in the middle of these pulls. There you go. Kill the, kill the fucking ads. Wait for the pat. Now, in a perfect world, you would like to pull this imp group without the pat but man it is tough because he's like right in the middle of everything so what i do is i just mark him with skull and i just i pull him with the other group now if you if you you can pull him when he's about he's there but if he would have walked a half an inch forward it would have pulled this other group. So this other group here, um, same thing here. Not only imp, uh, mages can counter spell the imp, um, and if you want, the same thing goes here. Just los I'm over here. You really don't want to try to kill all those mobs at the same time, unless you're a pally tank that is. You know, stunning the imps, it's really tough. So, same thing here. This part, at this part, you just kill them. Nothing real dangerous here. So, the legionnaires, they will charge. 
nothing real scary here. Um, you know, if you're worried about your gear or your mitigation, um, I'd say like, you know, a, a warrior tank that's in the middle of gearing, um, you can CC. Don't really need to, but you can. All right, so you're going to have your adepts, your warlocks, your summoners, all these guys. The summoners can summon um, succubus, which can CC your party members. You definitely want to keep that guy interrupted. Um, and you'll see that room, this room can be very dangerous too. There's a lot of, um, pulls in this place that can be very scary. You want to make sure the pass away, LOS pull. So you want to, you know, target him and then you want to pull and then kind of hide around this corner, get him to pull back. Um, Warlock, you can pull him when he's over there and, you know, just outrange him. And, you know, you have, again, you have the Adepts and the Summoner pull. So, you have two Summoners this time. I would recommend having somebody on Interrupt Duty that can do it. You know, uh, Feral Druids can, um, uh, excuse me, Feral Druids can bash them if you're tanking. If not, if you're not tanking, you can act. You won't have maim yet, but if you're doing this on heroic at 70, you can maim them. There's a lot of ways you can you can do that. Rogues would be ideal. Mages would be ideal. Hunters. I don't think they have their their range interrupt yet, but I do think that they can. Their pet can stun. So there's a lot of variables here that you can handle. And there is a stealth bomb. I forgot about him. Honestly. And again, the forces, nothing major. So, um, the tank just needs to keep, you know, moving around a little bit. Okay. This room is really fucking annoying. So, we have the technicians. The technicians will drop mines. If anybody steps on that fucking mine or stands on top of it and it goes off, they're dead. It's just the way it is. Unless they're a tank, they're going to die. So, the tank needs to keep the mobs, as soon as they drop the mines, they need to move back. Melee needs to pay attention to where the mines are and not trip them. And range, it's going to be a non-issue because range shouldn't be in melee range. Um, you do have a, a pat here. I would actually recommend pulling the pat first. Then pull this technician group. And again, you want to try to pull back in the room, the room to clear it so you're not getting extra shit. Um, you know, summoner group. And this group. And then, um, just clear them out. Real simple stuff. Alright, so we're at the first boss. This is the maker. I'm going to check the dungeon journal. I'm not 100% if this guy does anything crazy. I don't believe so. Okay. So he will MC somebody. Last 10 seconds. Um, he also will throw a beaker at a player, inflicting X amount of damage to all players around him, knocking them up. So everybody say spread out. <clears throat> when the person gets MC'd, you CC them. Sheep sap or uh, stun anything you got um it it doesn't break based on damage so that's what you want to do you just want to keep them away and stun stun them whatever you need to do um to keep them from you know fucking you up so also as soon as this guy dies actually no that's not that's not this boss it's been a while. You guys are going to have to bear with me. Alright, so... Just kill him. That doesn't actually drop... In uh, actual BC, it's a, uh, he will drop a cloth helm, but it's not epic. It'll be blue. Um, in BC heroics, only drop epics on the last boss. 
and it's only one. All right, so we have more of the same here. So the the te more text, um, avoid the mines, blah blah blah. Um, so you, this first pull here, you're gonna pull these these guys back into this room. Um, you got one or two things, two ways you can handle this part. I usually w will just wait for the pat. Okay. Come in here. There's a rogue. And there's going to be one at the end of the hallway too. All right. Uh, same thing here. We're going to pull at LOS. Um, we have a, another warlock pull. You want to kill a summoner first. Okay. Summoners die first because you don't want to deal with succubus. Pull them back before the pack gets here. If you can. Kill the pat. The pat isn't dangerous. It's just some. I mean, they're gonna hit the tank hard, but they don't do anything abnormal. Um, beyond that, so we're entering the next boss room. But we need to find the rogue that's hiding in this corner. Okay. All right. More of the same. The legionnaires, I believe, can charge. So, you know, whatever. Technician, you know, in this pull, just watch the mines kill summoner first. Um, you can LOS pull or you can just charge in because you don't have to worry about aggroing the rest. More the same, just kill them. That's three techs. All right, so this is going to be your first little gauntlet that we're going to end up dealing with. In um, we're also going to deal with this in uh, uh, Zolomon. So what what I mean by gauntlet is you're going to activate it and you're going to have to kill some mobs before the next phase starts. So when I pull this. Each one of these little cage things are going to open. We're going to kill the bobs down. There's three per pack. So warriors and druids, you're fine. Uh, just use your um, warriors. Use cleave and uh, thunderclap druids to swipe. Um, if you are a druid tank, what works best for me here is not to shift into bear form until the very last second and to use enrage. And you'll be fine. Pre-hot yourself, maybe. Get a little burst threat. You'd be fine. Three ads. Kill them. So, and this is all time. So if you're killing these things too slow, you're going to keep getting more and more ads. So th th this is kind of like a little backdoor um, DPS check. Uh, Druids on this pole. Tap target with lacerate will be your best friend. All right, and then we're going to have the boss. So this boss, let's go over Dungeon Journal real quick. And I'm sorry, guys. It's been a long time since I've actually done these bosses. It's irrelevant. So you have the ads, um, whatever. Um, the boss does a spray. Just hits everything in front of him. She does a poison cloud. But she just puts a bunch of shit underneath him just can't stand in it and he does a bolt so it's easy face the boss away from the group when he does the poison cloud move and that's it nothing big uh, he does drop a gun but it's not epic and he does drop leather pants but it's again not epic Okie doke. So. 
Now we're coming to the bad part. And by bad part, I mean on heroic, not normal. Normal is it's all pretty simple stuff, but on heroic, it's a different story altogether. All right, same stuff here. You're gonna want to pull in LOS, especially with the warlocks and the the imps and stuff. Just LOS over here. Get him to come over here. You don't want to interact with these fell fell guards. So I'm going to explain how these fell guards work. The warlock is gonna buff them. So we're gonna watch them. You see him casting fell power. You do not want to pull him when he has fell power. You want to wait. Wait, 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 and wait. And then after it fades, you want to stun the Warlock and kill the Felguard. Now, if you have a Warlock, just have him enslave it. And then when you ha if a Warlock has it enslaved, then you can just use it as a tank into the next pull, wait for it to die, enslave the next one, so on and so forth. Um, or you can just have a Rogue Sheep the Warlock, kill the fell guard, and then kill the Warlock. Either way, it's totally, it works either way. Okay. Now, you have two fell, um, fell guards. On Heroic, you're going to want something to happen. Um, if you're doing this place on Heroic, I strongly recommend bringing a Warlock. It just makes this whole place so much easier. Plus, Warlocks are going to do insane damage anyway. If you do have a lock, you're going to banish one, kill the other. If you don't, I hope you got some potions and cooldowns because you're going to need them. Those things hurt. Um, you do have some stealth units around. Just um, make sure you bring, bring your free action potions. And if you're playing Classic WoW and you're trying to get ready for BC, buy them. They're cheap as hell. They're like 50 silver or something. They're dirt cheap. All right, so you have a Warlock and a whole bunch of non-elites, and all of them pull together. So, so you can CC the Warlock and kill the Imps, which is what we used to do back in the day. Or, Tank can just go in, use, like, Challenging Roar slash Shout. Or Paladin can... Do, pa Pallies have it really easy. All they got to do is run in there and use um, their uh, Undead Stunt. I'm trying to think of the name of it. I can't think of it right now. But if you're a warrior or a druid, you're just going to want to tank the warlock and then try to get all this other shit done. Now, make it easier on your damage by LOSing. So you're going to pull and you're going to try to get the imps to all go to, you know, this little doorway here. Um, if you're a druid, you can cast hurricane with hots. If you're a warrior, good luck. <laughs> That's all the advice I really have, unfortunately. It's just, it, it's it's pretty tough for the Warriors. No, I'm not even going to lie. Warriors have it kind of tough at first. Um, they do end up getting really good. Okay, so if you've watched any Burning Crusade videos about Blood Furnace, everyone will tell you, like, you need a Warlock for, my, you know, for uh, Banish and Enslave. There is a grain of truth to that. If you have a, a hunter, you can have them off tank for you. We'll make this very much a very easy. If these fell guards hit like motherfuckers. They hurt bad. Almost to the point to where it's almost impossible to tank them. Um, you know, I would say the first week or two, it's going to be almost impossible to take them without some sort of warlock help. But you should have a lock. Trust me, you're going to want to bring a warlock in here. It just makes this place so much easier. On normal, it's not nearly as big of a deal. But on heroic, it is a fucking... Sh These guys hurt. Um, what we used to do is we used to have the tank at threat and then just start kiting up and down. Um, but they hurt and they charge too. So it's not like you can just outrun them. Um, again, if you have a warlock, you're going to banish. And preferably if you have a mage too, you can cheat the warlock, banish one of the fell guards, and just pull it on, on the other one by itself. But, you know, like I said, good luck. 
You're gonna need it. If you have a druid, um, you can have ask them to cyclone. Uh, there's going to be some heavy DRs when it comes to the Cyclone, but it might buy you a little bit of time to get at least a Warlock down. Okay, last boss. I'm pretty sure I remember Rose McCain, but we'll go over him anyways. Okay, so he, um, these, these ads, all they do is cast Shadow Bolt, and they have a, uh, a dot or a debuff they put on, on people that will make them take more Shadow Damage. Pretty easy stuff. Um, you can actually pull him. In you can pull these things into this room, kill them, and then. But if you stay in this room, uh, he'll reset. So he does not activate until these guys are dead. Um, so that's just the way it is. So he will cast a couple different things. Okay. All right. So he's going to cast Shadow Bolt Volley, which is, you know, terrifying, especially if people have the debuffs from the ads. Um, Burning Nova, basically, he's going to do this thing where um, he banishes himself and he'll do this AoE, you just get, get away from him, let it happen, and then go back in and kill him. Um, and he does this thing called Shadow Wrath, he just... Um, it's instant cast, and he just does a bunch of damage to one person. Pretty easy stuff. Um, the hardest part for this pull is honestly the ads. Um, given that tanks have a target cap. Um, can be pretty challenging, but not too bad. So what you want to do is you pull one of the challengers. LOS them. Just to get them out of you know, like semi close to like semi close, and then you're gonna wanna just kill them. Yeah, they, you used to be able to do it. Uh, Blizzard obviously patched it. They don't. Want, they didn't want it cheat getting cheesed. If you like Ben, you know trivia there. You, if you look below, you'll see Mac Theridon. Um, again, these guys just cash out a bolt, so it, they don't really need to be tanked anyway. Um, the tank needs to try, but if you can't, you can't. It's not that big a deal. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have a decurse. I just don't see it on my bar. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, the cow the curse does it now. So th that thing can be dispelled. If you have a priest, they can master spell, which is amazing. So, you know, just pull. You can interrupt it. All right. Let's see if I can get him to show the... Oh, let's see if I can get him to do the Fire Nova. So, yeah, do the Fire Nova, just get the fuck away from him. And that's it. That's the boss. Really easy stuff. Alright. I think that helmet is that Super One Pally Transmogs for using. Yeah, that thing's ugly as fuck. Um, hell, Ruby Helm of the Just, um, you see Prop Paladins using that a lot at first. And that's it. <clears throat> that's Blood Furtis. I'm going to call it for that. And next time I'll see you guys, we'll be showing holes. Oh.